Welcome to Craft with Kathy. Tonight's project is our Try Me Kit for June and July called Make Your Own Waves. This is the ideal kit for anybody new to chalk. It's simple to use. It is actually on a chalkboard. It's called the Board and Base. Our Board and Base comes in white or in black. And this kit has it in white. It includes a squeegee, the transfer with the wording and the little waves, and two individual paste packets, one in Tide, one in Cadet. Perfect for creating this little project. So this is an ideal summertime piece of home decor. If you've got a longing for the beach and water, you might love this kit. And the fact that it's on a chalkboard makes it easy if you have any oops. If you're new to chalking and you're not quite sure if you could do this, believe me, if you could butter toast, you can chalk. If you make a mistake, spritz it with water and erase it. Our chalkboards are fully erasable and reusable and double-sided. So when you tire of this design, spritz it, erase it, and put something else on it. Great if you're limited on storage space too. It actually is easier to do than it is easier to remove it from the packaging. I was struggling so much with this. The chalkboard can be used vertically or horizontally. Just insert it in the little groove in the wood base. And our transfers are also reusable 8 to 12 times or more. Think of our transfer as, steer as um, stencils on steroids. They're made of vinyl and silk screen, and they're adhesive backed, easy to use. And the kit comes with a little card and a QR code to scan to show you a video how to, for how to make the kit. Do it as suggested or apply your own creativity. The choice is up to you. The colors included in this kit are Tide and Cadet. They're different shades of blue and they come in our individual packets which are a 0.19 size, usually enough to make the project two or more times. This project really uses very little pace so my guess is you can get three or more uses out of it. So make it for yourself and then make it for a friend. Once you clean the transfer and it dries, put it back in its packaging for the next time you want to use it. It really is that simple. Now I'm going to put this on the board a little bit higher up because I want to leave room for the board to be inserted into the base. So that's the only thing you have to watch for when using the board and base. Just allow a little, about a half inch or so at the bottom so you don't um, obscure any of the actual design. Now when I use the individual paste packets, I usually only use part of them. And I'll show you exactly the best way to save the remaining chalk paste for another project. Our transfers can be used on wood, chalkboard, dry erase boards, glass, metal, mirror, ceramic, and clothing or fabric. So you really have a choice of a lot of different surfaces. If it's something that's going to be washed, then I would suggest instead of using our chalk paste to use our ink, which needs to be heat set. But otherwise, you're good to go. Simple and easy. Now I'm going to remove this transfer from its backer. It has a little sheet, a white sheet on the back so that it doesn't get stuck to anything because remember it's adhesive backed. And because it's adhesive backed, it's very easy to position it and get a nice, clear, crisp image once you chalk it. When you chalk it, you're actually applying the squeegee and pushing the chalk paste through the silk screen onto the surface beneath it. No real pressure is just needed. Just wipe it across. It's as simple as that. Now, sometimes on surfaces, some surfaces, you will need to fuzz your transfer. I have a little fuzzing towel here. If you don't have a fuzzing towel, you could use anything with a little bit of lint. Towel, sweater, a pair of jeans, whatever. And the reason you do that is to diminish the stickiness a little bit so it doesn't stick quite as snugly. When using our transfers on glass, metal, or mirror, it's going to stick very strongly because it is very smooth. 
chalkboard, I probably fuzz it like three times. If I'm going to use it on wood, probably three times. The stickiness will diminish as you use it over and over and over again. But with proper care and cleaning, which is really, really simple, you can get 8 to 12 uses out of an individual transfer. So I'm going to massage the paste packet a little bit and push the paste kind of like towards the top where that little color tab is. I open my paste from the bottom so that I leave the color blocks intact so I could easily see what color paste is in my little packet. So just squeezing down the paste a little bit. See how I need the, um, the tide here. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? I had said couture teal. I'm sorry. I had said cadet and um, tide paste. This kitty actually comes with tide and couture teal. The cadet is more like a dark, dark blue. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to open this up and squeeze a little bit onto my project. Believe me, a little bit goes a long way. So you don't have to use much at all. Just need a little bit more than a dab to do this lettering. So I squeeze it onto the surface. You could squeeze it into a little tray, a little glass dish, or you could use one of our plastic color trays if you want to. Usually I go right to the surface with it though. Just want to get a little bit out, not too much, just enough, right? You'll get a feel for it. And I might have been a little bit stingy with this. I might need to add a little bit more. Now I'm taking our little silicone squeegee and just wiping across the white area, which is a silk screen. And as I wipe across, it pushes it through the silk screen onto the surface below. Like I said, if you can butter toast, you can chalk. It truly is that easy. And don't feel stimmied by any of the projects. You could add whatever creative touches you want yourself. I sometimes blend my paste to make an original color. If I don't like what I have, I'll mix something up to achieve the color I'm looking for. But in this kit, I think the couture teal and the tide go perfectly with it. Now I'm squeezing just a little bit more paste onto the surface to finish the lettering. I was a little bit frugal with it. Needs just a little dab more. So I'm going to finish the lettering in the couture teal. And then I'm going to do the waves using the tied chalk paste. Once I have the paste applied, I go back over it, smoothing it, removing any lines, and removing any excess. Our paste also comes in three ounce jars. And generally, if I was using a jar, I would put the excess paste back in the jar. Now I'm lifting up the transfer to check it out, and I notice that I missed a little area, so I'm using that squeegee to go back over the area I missed and take another peek at it. This pasting and lifting up the transfer is a technique called paste and peel, and it's great if you have something rather involved or if you're taking your time, you don't want the paste to dry in your silk screen. So once you've got the area that you're working on finished, just lift up that silk screen, or the I'm sorry, the transfer for a minute or so, and then lay it back down and go on to the next area that needs to be chalked. So I'm going to clean off my little packet of paste, squeeze it back down. Actually, the best way to squeeze it back down is to lay it flat on your surface and use a squeegee to go across the paste packet and squish it towards the bottom. And then I'm going to roll the area that I cut open at the t at actually the bottom. I'm going to roll it down a little bit and secure it with either a clip, a paper clip, a binder, or um, washi tape. Here I'm using our placement tape, which is like um, washi tape, but it does have a, a ruler measurement on it. And then I'll just put it aside for the next time I need to use that particular color paste. This way it keeps the air from getting into it and drying it out. No sense throwing it out, just save it for the next time. Okay, on to the next color. 
And I'll just lay the transfer back over what I've already chalked. I do, I'm not pressing it down. I'm just letting it lay on top of it. And I'm going to grab my other packet of paste and do the next color. Clean my squeegee because, of course, I don't want to have the couture teal chalk paste on my squeegee when I go to apply the, the tied chalk paste. It's real easy to clean your, your um, squeegee. You can use water. I just used a disinfecting wipe because I'm sitting at a table and that was handy. So I'm just going to squeeze out a tiny, tiny little dab of the Tide because I don't have much to cover here and use my squeegee to apply it. Generally, I pull the color when using the squeegee towards me, but I'm only doing this partially. I'm going to rotate it and then get the top and pull it towards me again. I just don't want to bump the colors that I already chalked. And that's pretty much it for chalking. There are some different techniques, but for something simple and straightforward like this, that's all you need to do. So I'm removing the transfer. I like to pull down either from the top, the bottom, the left, or the right. I never lift diagonally because of the silk screen is kind of like fabric. So I'm going to put that aside to dry, and I'm going to clean this transfer. And this is a really grungy board eraser that I have here. I've used it with a lot of black paste, but all I did was wet it, and now I'm going over the top, the non-sticky side, and I'm just washing it with my little board eraser, removing the excess paste, and then I'm going to use a disinfecting wipe to clean up any remaining paste. I usually use a circular motion, and once I have the top done, I will flip it over and clean the paste off of the sticky side, the adhesive side of the transfer. And it's pretty much the same thing. I don't use the board racer normally on the sticky side. I just use the disinfecting wipe. Um, you could actually clean this at your sink and just massage the paste off with your fingers. If you have a spray, so much the better. But I like getting any residue off with a a disinfecting wipe on my table or on my surface. And then once I have all the paste removed, I go back over with a disinfecting wipe, a clean area of it, and just go in direct one direction to remove any of the lint that was deliberately applied. Then I set it aside, sticky side up to dry. Once it's dry, I will take its backer and apply it to the transfer. Much easier to apply the backer to this transfer when it's laying flat than doing the transfer to the backer. So I'm just putting this in its little frame. Wasn't this an easy, easy project? How simple. Now today's actually Tipsy Tuesday, and I want to show you a little tip that you can use when you are using chalk paste on wood. Wood is somewhat porous, and even though it could be sanded, it could be kind of bumpy and not real smooth. And what you want to do whenever you're chalking on wood is you want to wax the surface. That smooths it out and gives you a couple different benefits. It protects your transfer from lifting any splinters up with it. And it also puts a little bit of a barrier on the wood so that if you do make a mistake, sometimes you could wipe it off. Generally, though, our chalk paste on wood is permanent because the pigments from the chalk paste will seep into the wood and discolor it. Here's our surface wax that I usually use. It comes in a little two and a half ounce container. It is fragrance free, which is wonderful because I really don't like strong smells or anything like that. So generally that's what I will use. But if you're in a pinch and you don't have any surface wax to use, obviously you could buy wax at the hardware store or whatever, but you can also tear off a piece of wax paper, maybe about 10 inches long, crumple it up into a ball, and then just rub it all over the wood. And it will leave enough of a wax residue. I mean, you have to rub it in a little bit, but enough to protect your surface before you chalk on wood. So that's my Tipsy Tuesday tip. Use wax paper if you don't have surface wax. Just crumple it up and rub it into the wood. Now on chalkboard, you don't need to wax. We only really wax wood. Wasn't that quick and easy? Simple, simple project.
And of course, you could use add ribbon or any other type of embellishments that you might want to add to this. The choice is up to you. Now I need to clean my squeegee. Again, I could just use water or a disinfecting wipe. It works fine. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this quick little tutorial. This kit is available June and July. See you soon.